this video we will take a look at problem 1.13 from Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics 3rd edition. Uh, we're going to do a so-called numerical experiment to check the results of problem 1.11b. So to remind you 1.11b we found that rho of x is equal to 1 over pi times the square root of a squared minus x squared. This is just a probability density function for harmonic oscillator. Um, Okay, and then it tells us that the position of the oscillator at any time t is given by x equals a cosine omega t. Um, now we might as well take omega equals 1 because that's going to set the scale for time, and then a equals 1 because that's going to set the scale for length. And so whatever, you know, we're not doing a physical problem here, we're just doing a numerical experiment. And so we might as well take those values equal to 1 for simplicity, but you can set them to be whatever you want as long as you're consistent. Okay, so and then... It says make a plot of x at 10,000 random times and compare it with a row of x. So we know what row of x is. Again, that's right here. Uh, we want to make a plot of x at 10,000 random times. So here's x. We're going to choose 10,000 t values. And we just want to plot uh, in, in bins, in a histogram, uh, where do those uh, x values land at any given random time. Uh, and then we want to superimpose the... Uh, row of x, the actual curve, on top of that histogram and see if it looks uh, reasonable, if it, everything matches up. So the problem itself gives us a hint for how to do this problem in Mathematica. Uh, we can define x equals cosine t. Again, omega and a are equal to 1. Uh, we can then define the 10,000 snapshots uh, of what x is, and then we can define uh, a histogram with 100 bins we can superimpose row onto that. Uh, I'm going to use Python instead, but I'm, do, gonna, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So lines 1 and 2, I'm just going to set up a, my Python script. If you're unfamiliar with Python, this is very common to start with lines like this, just your imports. Um, most often, I'm going to import these, these two. If I'm using any sort of uh, uh, cosine or pi or square root, you see I always have np dot before all of those. So if you're going to be using those, you've got to import NumPy as NP. If you're going to do any plotting, you're probably going to import the plotting library. Uh, then I will define x of t as just NP dot cosine of t. Uh, so in other words, I will call this function, I'll give it a t value, and it's going to return to me the cosine of that t value. I'm, going to I'm then going to define row of x where, uh, where I give it an x value, and it will give me the 1 divided by pi times the square root of 1 minus x squared. Again, this is really a minus x squared, but I've set a equal to 1. So in other words, it's just row of x from 1.11b. Uh, just like the um, Mathematica hint from the problem itself, I'm going to define something called snapshots. These are just my 10,000 random x values. Uh, and then I'm going to set up my plot here on line 12. Uh, I'm just setting the size so, you know, you don't necessarily have to do exactly how I do it. I'm just going to be a little picky about how I set this up so that it looks nice. Uh, I'm going to plot uh, a histogram using snapshots. I'm going to do 100 bins. Um, that's really the important stuff there. And then the x values I'm going to have uh, go from minus 1 to positive 1, and I'm going to have 1,000 uh, intervals between those two values, minus 1 and plus 1, on my x-axis. And then, most importantly of all, I'm going to actually plot my x values, uh, and then on my y-axis, I'm going to do row of my x values. And I'm going to set my y limits to, to be 0 and 2. That's just kind of arbitrary. You can set it to be whatever you want, or you don't even have to set it at all. Um, I'm going to label my two axes. I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to give it a legend. Um, you don't have to do any of this necessarily. I'm just making it look nice. Uh, and then I'm going to give it a grid as well, again, extra stuff, and then I'm going to save the figure as a PDF, again, extra stuff. So if I really wanted to do this in as few lines as possible, I probably could do uh, less than 10 lines for sure. Um, but I, I'm making it look nice. Uh, and then here was what we obtain. So we have row of x, which is uh, the red line, and it's superimposed on top of the histogram, which you see are really just 100 bins, and any time the, uh, essentially, we're, we're, we're graphing the x values at uh, 
10,000 different times. And we see that obviously the bends uh, on the edges are a lot more full than the ones toward the middle. Uh, think about this physically as a pendulum and it's swinging back and forth. Most of the time, the pendulum, if you took a picture, an actual snapshot, most of the time you're gonna catch the pendulum uh, out on, on the sides, to the left or to the right. Very infrequently, in comparison, are you gonna catch it when it's directly in the middle or right about in the middle, because that is where the pendulum is moving the fastest. So there's a very physical reason why we expect uh, the histogram to show up like this. We are expecting, in fact, that, uh, you know, it, again, if we're actually taking physical pictures on a, on a camera, we, we would certainly expect that we're gonna catch it on the edges much more frequently than we catch it in the middle.